In this video, we'll continue our discussion of angles in circles. All right, so today the focus will be, dis uh, will be on tangents, secants, and chords, and the angles that they form when they intersect. All right, so first of all, it's helpful to understand what tangents, secants, and chords are. A tangent is simply a line or any part of that line that intersects a circle at exactly one point. So in the picture over here, the line or the segment that I see that intersects the circle at exactly one spot is line CD. And line CD is a line that's tangent to the circle at point C. The point where the tangent intersects the circle is called the point of tangency. A secant is a line or any part of that line that intersects a circle at any two points. So when looking at the diagram right here or down here, if I look at line EB, line EB intersects the circle at point E, it intersects the circle at point B, that makes line EB a secant. And a chord, this is a little bit of review, is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So the important thing there to know, endpoints on the circle. So AC would be a chord. AB would be a very special kind of chord called a diameter that passes through the center of the circle. All right, and today we're going to look at three different kinds of angles, and I'm going to classify these angles into three different categories, starting with angles whose vertex is on the circle. So we looked at one of those yesterday called the inscribed angle. We said an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle that's formed by two intersecting chords. So here's vertex at point B formed by chords A, B, and C, B. And we said, or the rule that we used, is that the measure of the angle is always going to be equal to half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in this picture, the intercepted arc is the arc in red. It's the arc that's contained between the two blue sides of the angle. The degree measure of the arc is 100. That's going to make the degree measure of the angle half of 100, or 50. So x is equal to half of 100 which is equal to 50 degrees. All right, the next one, a tangent chord angle, also has its vertex on the circle and also has a degree measure equal to half that of the intercepted arc. So if I take a look at what's going on in this picture, BC is the tangent, and that's one side of my angle. AB is the chord, that's the second side of my angle. The degree measure of that angle is going to be equal to one half of the intercepted arc. The intercepted arc is going to be the arc that's contained by the two sides of the angle. So in this case, the arc is going to be that red arc, or arc AB, which has degree measure of 120. So the angle X is going to have degree measure equal to half of the 100 degree, 120 degree intercepted arc, or in other words, 60 degrees. The last one, a tangent radius angle, says if a line is tangent to a circle, it's going to be perpendicular to the radius that's drawn to the point of tangency. Notice that the vertex of this angle also is on the circle. And if I look at angle ODB, this blue angle right here, and I extend radius OD to include the diameter, this one follows the same rule. The intercepted arc is going to be the arc that's contained by the two blue sides of the angle, or in other words, 180 degrees. Because the vertex is on the circle, its degree measure is going to be half the 180 degrees, or 90 degrees, making that angle a right angle, and the degree measure equal to 90 degrees. So let's see, the measure of angle ODB and ODA also, for that matter, is 90 degrees. So if I go back to summarize the three instances that we just talked about, whenever we have an angle whose vertex is on the circle, we said the degree measure of the angle was equal to half the degree measure of the arc. That's going to be an important rule that you need to bring with you. 
There is one exception to this rule that we'll talk about when you come back to class the next time. All right, so that's the summary for who, of angles whose vertex is on the circle. Let's go now talk about angles whose vertex is outside the circle. So these are going to be angles formed by maybe two tangents, a secant and a tangent, or a couple different secants. If we take a look at the picture in the diagram here for this angle formed by two tangents, we have tangent AB, which I just highlighted in red, and tangent CB, which I just highlighted in red. The rule for finding the degree measure of this angle is going to be half the difference of the intercepted arcs. Well, the two arcs that are intercepted by the tangents are going to be twofold. They're going to extend from point A where the first tangent is tangent to the circle and point C where the second tangent is intersected by the circle. So that major arc that I just highlighted in blue is going to be the first of our two arcs. The minor arc is going to be the arc that's smaller, that's inside uh, the angle, so to speak. All right, so because the vertex of this guy is outside the circle, and I might even put a little fancy star there to remind myself exactly what I'm working with here, the degree measure of the angle is going to be half the difference of the two intersected arcs. So in this case, x is going to be half of the blue arc, 260 degrees, subtract the green arc, 100 degrees. And if I grab my calculator and punch in a half times 260 minus 100, I end up with 80 degrees for the degree measure of the angle. Anytime you have an angle that's formed by two secants, like in the second example, again, the very first thing that I'm going to do is look for the location of the vertex. The vertex is outside the circle. The degree measure of the angle is going to be half that of the difference of the two intercepted arcs. So if I look at my angle, which I just highlighted in red, there are two intercepted arcs, the first of which exists between points A and E, the second of which is that green one that I just highlighted between points B and D. Because this vertex is at C, outside the circle, the degree measure of the angle is going to equal half the difference between the degree measures of the arcs. So the blue arc is 80, green arc is 20, 80 from 20 is 60, and half of 60 means the degree measure of that angle is equal to 30. If I flip up to the top of the next page, again, I've got an angle formed by a tangent and a secant. The location of the vertex is outside the circle. And so the rule that I'm going to follow is the degree measure of the angle, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight my angle in red, is going to be half the difference of the two intercepted arcs. So I'm going to look at A and look at D and find the arc that connects them. The arc that connects them on the other side is going to be that green arc. And the angle measure is going to be half the difference between those two arcs. So 100 degrees for the blue arc, subtract 30 degrees for the green arc x is equal to 35 degrees. All right, so in summary, if I go back to the preceding page, anytime the vertex is outside the circle, the degree measure of the angle is going to be half of the difference between the two intercepted arcs. All right, the last case scenario that we need to take a look at is what happens when the vertex of the angle is inside the circle, but not at the center. So in looking at my picture here, point O is the center of the circle. My angles intersect here at point E, which is inside the circle, but not at the center. Notice that anytime these two segments intersect, we're going to have a pair of vertical angles that are going to be congruent to each other. So in looking at these pair of vertical angles, I have one angle, angle BED, whose intercepted arc is 70. I have a congruent vertical angle, angle CEA, whose intercepted arc is 170. Notice that the degree measures of the blue arc and the purple arc are different. I'm going to think about the measure, the degree measure of the angle being equal to the average of the blue arc and the purple arc. So in this particular case, x is going to be equal to the blue arc plus the purple arc divided by 2, or in other words, half 
of their sum. So half of 70 plus 170, which when I punch this into my calculator, comes out to be 120 degrees. So the rule that you need to follow anytime you have an angle whose vertex is inside the circle, but not at the center, is the degree measure of the angle equals half the sum of the two arcs. And then lastly, anytime you have an angle whose vertex is inside the circle and at the center, this is review from yesterday, that's a central angle. And you should remember from yesterday that the rule that we follow is that the degree measure of the angle is equal to the degree measure of the intercepted arc. So in this particular case, the intercepted arc is the arc contained between points A and B. Its degree measure is 80. And this should say arc AB. So x is equal to 80 degrees. So to summarize all of the rules from the video today, anytime the angle or the vertex of the angle is at the center of the circle, the degree measure of the angle is equal to the degree measure of the arc. If the vertex of the angle is inside the circle, yet not as it, at its center, the degree measure of the angle is equal to half the sum of the intercepted arcs, or you might say the average of the two arcs. When the location of the vertex is outside the circle, the degree measure of the angle is equal to half the difference between the two arcs. And then lastly, when the vertex of the angle is on the circle, the degree measure of the angle is equal to half that of the intercepted arc. There is an exception to this rule, and in the interest of time, I think we'll wait and discuss that when we come back to class. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and use your own words to summarize what you've seen in this video and what you think are the important takeaways. And then see if you can apply what you've learned in this video in order to answer the questions on the following page.